A very rare weather pattern is developing. Gabrielle strengthens into a hurricane. Welcome to the weather forecast on BTB Tian channel. Dear friends, in today's video, we're going to dive into the upcoming weather pattern, taking a close look at what's going on in North America over the next week or two. A major change in weather patterns is coming to the United States over the next few days. This will bring an even more intense heat wave to much of the United States with temperatures reaching 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, about 32 to 38 degrees Celsius, as far north as Illinois and Iowa. Severe weather is returning to the United States today with damaging winds, large hail, and even a few tornadoes possible. Additionally, the tropics are starting to heat up. We have a tropical depression and a couple of tropical waves that are getting very close, if not moving into the Caribbean. And we're tracking some heavy rain like the Dominican Republic. Biz really from about Hopkins South through Punta Gorda. If you like this video, please share it with your friends, family and on social media. Comment in the comments below the video. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel to follow, thank you. We'll start with what's going on across the country today, as we see the shift of storms out in the western Pacific. It's going to cause an overall low pressure pattern to form there over areas over the north central Pacific, originating from Siberia, areas from Alaska down. There's a little bit of high pressure to the east of them sometimes along areas in western North America and even areas over the eastern Pacific. And sometimes this also causes a pretty big trough over eastern Canada and into the central and eastern United States, and we still have a hurricane, Gabrielle. That's raging in the mid-Atlantic right now, and fortunately, this storm looks like it's going to be pretty far east of Bermuda. For the most part it's not expected to have much of an impact on anybody on land. And it's probably going to be a tropical storm and dissipate. The storm as a non-tropical system. Just a rainstorm type of storm. So let's look at the storm situation here. As of tonight, we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms in some parts of the Midwest and the Plains. There's not really much rain across the country. We can see the four corner states up into the Rocky Mountains. Also, a lot of the Midwest going east into the Ohio Valley, some of the interior. The Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic are starting to see showers as well. The deeper south is really in need of rain. Looking at Wednesday the 24th here, we can see areas from the east to the deeper south continuing to see rain. Thursday the 25th here, we're going to see more in the deep south and southeast. The mid-Atlantic and northeast are a little drier on Thursday, but by Friday, the rain will move more into the mid-Atlantic there. As you can see, it's looking pretty nice in those areas with showers. Maybe even thunderstorms. Saturday here on the 27th, the mid-Atlantic is collecting in the northeast, which may need more. But they'll start to get some early next week. Monday here on the 29th. We'll see some more rain in parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast with a little bit of a very weak offshore low here. Moving a little bit further into Tuesday the 30th. Something interesting is going to happen. Up above where you can see there's a low over Hudson Bay. And it could have a similar effect to a system between Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes. Which has a long cold front, which we can see here. And up above where you can see there's a warm front to the east. So we're seeing the warm front rising and then the cold front gradually moving in. We have this pretty strong cold front moving in and if we look at the jet stream, it looks very different than what we've been dealing with. We can clearly see a ridge of high pressure to the west and a trough forming over the central and eastern states. We have some snow in eastern Canada. It's very far north. But that doesn't surprise me too much because the cold air here is very, very cold. As we continue to move into Friday the 3rd, a little low to the northeast, more rain, a little bit cooler. So, keep an eye out, but we're starting to see a low forming over the central plains, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, between the central plains and the Midwest there. We have a little warm air that wants to develop here, and it looks like a cold front wants to develop as well. 
So we could get a little pushback by warm air to the east if a stronger low like this tries to form. And we have a small low pressure system just off the coast of Cape Hatteras, over North Carolina. This has actually brought wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour to far eastern North Carolina. However, winds are still quite strong and heavy rain will continue today with a very low risk of tornadoes in the adjacent coastal areas of Virginia as well as North Carolina. Excessive rainfall is also a concern. Back in the Great Plains, we are tracking another shortwave trough that will move across the Rocky Mountains throughout this afternoon. And this will bring a return of more significant severe weather, including damaging winds, hail and even a few tornadoes. However, we do have a low pressure system currently active across the northern plains and the Rocky Mountains. And this will contribute to the potential for severe weather across the central and northern plains, with all the hazards that are possible. And then there's a small low pressure system coming back along the east coast but I don't really see any major severe weather coming in the near term. However, in the last week of September, let's see how strong the average wind flow is as it moves across the northern part of the United States. And these are really the first signs that we're going to move into fall. We typically have very strong cold fronts, sometimes very cold weather, and even snow in some cases, in early October. This is going to be the start of a big change in weather patterns. So one of the most important things that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks is that the average wind flow is going to be much stronger. One of the biggest changes in weather that we will experience over the next few days will be temperatures. These are the temperature anomalies. Right now, we are talking about above average temperatures across much of the Midwest and back into the Ohio Valley with some small pockets of below average temperatures along the East Coast and across the Rocky Mountains. The warm weather will continue across the Midwest, Ohio Valley and the Great Plains where above average temperatures are expected, especially across the Great Plains. We could even start to see some record high temperatures around mid to late next week across the northern plains and midwest. So the next few days are going to be very hot. These are high temperatures where areas like Wisconsin and Minnesota are still seeing temperatures in the 80s for this time of year. Temperatures will return to Texas and also Missouri and Arkansas. Temperatures will remain in the 80s and 90s across most of the country. We could even see some areas in the mid to upper 90s and early 100s in parts of Illinois and Missouri by the middle of next week. Specifically, from the 22nd to the 26th, with a very high chance of above average temperatures across the northern part of the country. Now, it's time to look at what's going on in the lower 48 states over the next few days and then the kind of precipitation that could impact some of us. This weekend is going to be cloudy, drizzle, and rain for you guys in the northern plains, at least the eastern parts of the northern plains, the Midwest, and the Great Lakes. Look at that, significant cloud cover extending from Virginia, down into Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, or Kansas, Wyoming, Colorado, West and South Texas seeing a lot of clouds and showers coming out of some of those clouds, even thunderstorms. But really in the Oklahoma Panhandle and the Texas Panhandle around Amarillo, back into Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, seeing thunderstorms this afternoon with the potential for wind and hail. A few scattered severe storms is not impossible as some of that energy moves through these areas. Increasing the elevation gradient, and tomorrow there's going to be a trough of low pressure moving in. That trough of low pressure is active in the northern tier. It's being reinforced by another line of energy that will be more active in the Great Lakes and Upper Ohio Valley tomorrow and bring the risk of severe thunderstorms. Forecast temperatures in the 60s in the northeast across the northern tier where we'll see rain and clouds, back into the 80s as we head into the Pacific Northwest and inland areas at least down into the San Joaquin Valley. 
hundreds in the desert southwest and then 90s and muggy south and Gulf Coast states back into Florida and then we'll see 80s in the Piedmont areas of North Carolina and Virginia and up into the Great Lakes. A little bit of a strong wind coming down the eastern flank of the app, bringing highs in the 70s and low 80s to the Piedmont areas of North Carolina. Temperatures in the north. 60s in the north in the northern parts of the Midwest where we'll see rain and clouds, then back into the 80s back into the eastern parts of Montana. But cooler in the northwest where a new trough is working to bring rain there and then warm across the south, even hot and humid in some places with temperatures around 90. Scattered showers back across the northern parts of the Four Corners, west of the interior mountains, and then this trough pushes in bringing some rain to the Pacific Northwest and a few spots in the Appalachian Mountains around northern Virginia. Eastern West Virginia and southwest North Carolina could see a few more showers tomorrow afternoon. Looking at the main body of rain here in the Great Lakes, down through the Ohio Valley, back into the eastern parts of the Great Lakes, back into the Tennessee Valley, we could see about 0.6 inch of rain, Really, the biggest rain threat is going to be back here through Missouri and uh, Kansas City, St. Louis and places like that. Southern, Indiana here and Illinois near Wabash and you go up to Duff, Michigan. We'll see some rain there and some rain to the south and of course with that energy working in the Pacific Northwest, a cloudy and rainy day is coming your way. So a lot of areas need rain namely in the west and up into the middle Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley, stretching out to the northeast. Really dry and then drying out to the southeast. So, is this area likely to get some rain? So if you're out there let me and everyone know. Comment down in the description of this video right now. Okay thanks. And we're tracking Gabrielle. It's going to become a hurricane. It's going to continue to develop based on how warm the water is here. A wave approaching Bermuda. Now, look here. We're in buys back in Roatan. Very heavy rain, maybe another 6 inches of rain in some places over the next 3 days. So anywhere from 150 millimeters to about 6 inches. Keep an eye out in buys. We're going to see some flooding, especially in the central and southern areas, and then we're going to be tracking Honduras as well. We're in the Caribbean. This is a tropical wave that's trying to develop a little bit. Another wave is moving off the coast of Africa. I want to show you some pictures of the rainfall that this storm is going to bring. Well, if it moves a little bit further west, that could cause some tropical storm conditions, but right now, the center of the storm is as far east as this, we're going to be fine in Bermuda. And you see, in just a day or two, it's going to strengthen into a Category 1 hurricane. And then eventually, as it moves into the North Atlantic, it's going to weaken as it transitions from a tropical system to a subtropical system and flows into some of the cooler waters to the north. So we're in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, the east coast of the United States, Atlantic Canada, not leaving anybody out. Then, as we get into the middle of next week, which is Wednesday, we're going to be tracking this tropical wave. That's the wave that's getting a little closer to Africa at the moment, near Cabo Verde. But we're going to be tracking this wave as it gets closer. There's going to be another little spot behind it. So we have a long way to go in hurricane season. Now, keep an eye on anything moving toward the Caribbean part of the Gulf because the water is very warm. The water temperature is already close to 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, pushing 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the heat content of the ocean. That's the energy that's absorbed. But in this case, because of these big pockets of heat, the high heat content, if something comes through here, it's just going to create more water, more fuel. So that's what we're going to be watching as we go into hurricane season because if something gets closer to us, it could get stronger. And then as we go deeper into next week, we're going to be watching both of these areas. So the first storm could end up bringing more rain to the US and British Virgin Islands, where we just had flooding a couple of days ago. Rain will increase here and you can see it here on Thursday. 
This is the wave that's near Africa right now. That storm is going to be coming toward us in the Eastern Caribbean. That's why I mentioned that next week is going to be a week with at least some rain. The chances of the tropical wave moving out of the Caribbean are higher. In the US model, as well as a couple of other models, as well as a couple of other models, are building up some rain in the Western Caribbean. Watch for areas of heavy rain. Watch for mudslides and flooding in Guatemala, Baez, Honduras, El Salvador, and Nicaragua, Costa Rica. Panama is still very busy, but Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. It's not all that uniform, Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad. We'll see some areas that could get showers, and then showers here throughout next week. And there's a little bit of excess rain from South Florida that spills into the Bahamas toward Cuba scattered. But as we get into this week at the end of September, we're going to be watching for tropical waves that are trying to push through. So at the very least, we're going to be watching for some flooding. And then we're going to be looking deeper into the week. This is Wednesday. Gabrielle is in the North Atlantic. It's going to continue to the south and east. But we're going to see some heavy rain in the middle of the week as we move into parts of the United States. We're going to be looking for some surges coming back through the Atlantic sea lanes as the new tropical waves start to get closer. So in terms of rainfall, it really just depends on whether you get thunderstorms. If you do get thunderstorms, the winds are going to be strong and you could get a quick 50 millimeters or 2 inches of rain, up to about 4 inches. So South Florida, Bahamas, south through Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, watch for some spots of rain. The Cayman Islands as well. Again, if there is rain, be aware of the potential for flooding. Track from Haiti, Dominican Republic back to Puerto Rico. Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bart, Antigua, Barbuda. Many of us have had rain back to the Virgin Islands over the past few days. Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Barbados. Scattered showers extending into Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago. Northern Surinam, a slightly higher chance of rain, not as much as Guyana. This is western Mexico but the Yucatan Peninsula has scattered rain, and the southwestern U.S. south to California, some additional rain. This will be a drag on more thunderstorm activity as you head back east through Oklahoma.